little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed at home. No, 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 I can't believe all this. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. This is absolutely weird. Somebody here in America saying, well said, Brenda. America? Oh. Australia, hashtag Brenda for Prime Minister. Oh, uh, I agree with Brenda from Bristol. Oh my Lord. You were trending on Twitter. Do you know what that means? Quite frankly, no, because I don't possess any form of technology. General election. You're joking. Not another one? Oh, for God's sake. I'm In my very humble opinion, there's hardly anybody in any of the parties that you would put your life on the line for. We need somebody that's got a little bit of guts to, you know, to get us all going. You're joking. Not another one? Oh, for God's sake, I can't honestly, I can't stand this. There's too much politics going on at the moment. Why does she need to do it? Are you excited about another election? No, <laughs> no not another one. There's too much, there's too much, isn't it? Great. Good? Well, yeah, because it means that we can get her out. Let's see what the people want. So, do you feel ready for a general election? Yeah, we need one. Are you excited by the prospect of being able to vote again? <laughs> uh, not necessarily. Yes, of course, obviously, every chance to get the vote, you will vote. But uh, I think it's uh, they're just taking advantage of a bad situation at the moment. So, all in all, it's not good for the country. It's kind of rooting for an election. Let's get out there, let's get to the polls, let's put the stamp on Brexit or not, if you want to. overwhelming sense of dread at having to do this all over again. I'm only 20 years old and I'm already tired of the process. People are tired. Um, I think everyone's fed up. We're tired, but we just understand it needs to happen. Let's get it done and let's see what goes on from there. I find it profoundly depressing when people say that, that they've got faith with the team. So all around the world, there are people in, in Syria and Turkey dying to have the rights that we do. We are so lucky here. And sometimes pressure causes people to sort themselves out, tidy up their shop and clean up their house. This is an opportunity for the opposition to get themselves together to recognise that Jeremy Corbyn isn't really the sort of leader that most people would like. There's been a lot of times where students have been screwed over, especially by Lib Dems, we know. They screwed us over with the tuition fees, they said they wouldn't do it, and they did. That was a really, really big promise that they made, and they basically betrayed us on that. Mr Gove, I'm absolutely astounded that you say that the Liberal Democrats are trying to wreck the will of the people. It is not wrecking the will of the people to seek to guarantee the rights of EU citizens to work in our NHS, to work in our schools, to contribute to our society. That motion confronts every member of this House with a clear and simple opportunity. A chance to vote for a general election that will secure the strong and stable leadership the country needs to see us through Brexit and beyond. We welcome the opportunity of a general election because it gives the British people the chance to vote for a Labour government that will put the interests of the majority first. We've been told that the Prime Minister needs to concentrate all of her time on Brexit negotiations and that nothing, nothing should get in the way. But now, as we have all learned in the last 24 hours, all of that was empty rhetoric. If 
this election is, as the Prime Minister said, about a more secure future for this country. If it is an election of such national significance, we should have an urgent change in the law to give Britain 1.5 million 16 and 17 year olds a say in what will be very much their future. I know it's a tweet from uh, David Cameron, the former Prime Minister, I'm sure we all remember uh, fondly, and um, earlier uh, welcoming, welcoming, the, uh, welcoming the Prime Minister, welcoming the Prime Minister's uh, decision to call an early election, given that uh, we are in this mess in one sense as a country because he put party before country in calling the referendum when he did. It is hardly surprising, hardly, hardly surprising that the Prime Minister should follow him and indeed choose to put party before country. The eyes to the right, 522, the nose to the left, 13. So the eyes have it. Well, I've already spelt out uh, the Brexit prospectus. I've already spelt out in the speech I gave in Lancaster House uh, at, uh, in January of this year. We followed that up with a white paper. Uh, that was followed up, of course, by what was put into the letter that I sent to the European Union for triggering Article 50 of the sort of relationship that we want to have with the EU. And no more detail in the manifesto, no, no fresh prospectus. Our, our manifesto will be a manifesto for taking this country forward. You've seen committed to fight the election without spelling anything new out at all. Nothing new about Brexit, nothing new about immigration, nothing new about trade. That is what people call seeking a blank cheque. Just saying to me, trust me, I'm in control, I'll get it sorted. Well, uh, if I may, with due respect, it's not seeking a blank cheque when I say to people, look what we've done already. Look what we've delivered as a government already. Look at the modern industrial strategy we're working on. Look at the uh, policies that we have and the aims that we have in terms of a good school place for every child. Look at the changes that we're making in terms of technical education for young people, ensuring that every young Brexit, person has an Which is why you say you're having the election. We are having the election in order to ensure that we strengthen our position for dealing with the European Union negotiations. But I've also been clear, as I said yesterday, and I'm happy to say it again now, that I believe that this is the way <coughs> that we can ensure we get clarity and stability into the future. We get the strong leadership we need for the United Kingdom going beyond Brexit. See, the reason I asked you at the beginning about that description of Vicar's daughter is it seems to me the pitch you made and have been very successful in making is that you're straight, uh, that you get on, that you don't play games, to use your phrase. It seems to me a lot of people looking today think that is precisely what you're doing, tearing up a promise to take a political opportunity to destroy your political opponents. What, what I've done is come to a decision, which I did come to reluctantly, because you're right, I, I had been saying that I didn't think there should be an election before 2020. I came to the decision reluctantly, because when I looked at what was happening, it seemed to me that the way that, that we, what we needed to do was strengthen our hand in negotiation with the European Union. Uh, what we also needed to do was to give this country certainty and clarity beyond Brexit. That's what this early election enables us to do. I think there are some people who are cheering you on on Brexit, but they're very worried that this is the sort of political opportunism that they don't much like. No, this is, this is, um, this is, I genuinely came to this decision reluctantly, having looked at the circumstances and having looked ahead at the process of negotiation. I want this country to be able to play the strongest hand possible in those negotiations to get the best possible deal, because that's in our long-term interests. Prime Minister give a guarantee that no Tory MP who is under investigation by the police and the legal authorities over election expenses in the last general election be a candidate in this election because if she won't accept that this is the most squalid election campaign that has happened in my lifetime i i stand by all the conservative mps who are in this house and who will be out there standing again campaigning campaigning for a conservative government that will give a brighter and better future for this country 
Mr. Speaker, we welcome the general election, but, 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 this, but, this is a, but this is a Prime Minister who promised there wouldn't be one. A Prime Minister who cannot be trusted. She says it's about leadership, yet is refusing to defend her record in television debates. And it's not hard to see why. The Prime Minister says we have a stronger economy. Yet, yet she can't explain why people's wages are lower today than they were 10 years ago, or why more households are in debt, six million people earning less than the living wage, child poverty is up, pensioner poverty is up, so why are so many people getting poorer? I can assure, I can assure the right honourable gentleman. First of all, I would point, I would point out to the right honourable gentleman that I have been answering his questions and debating these matters every Wednesday that Parliament has been sitting since I became Prime Minister, and I will be taking, I will be taking out to the country in this campaign a proud record of a Conservative government, a stronger a stronger economy, an economy with a deficit nearly two-thirds down, with 30 million people with a tax cut, 4 million people taken out of income tax altogether, record levels of employment, and £1,250 more a year for... This little piggy stayed at home, this little piggy had roast beef, this little piggy had no... And this little piggy went wee 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 all the way home. This little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed at home. This little piggy had roast beef. This little piggy had not. And this little piggy went wee 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 all the way home. A bit of rain. A bit of sunshine and a bit of rain and guess what probably a bit of sunshine again <laughs> that's the honest truth box of chocolate <laughs> Thomas Schaffernacke with the weather and now it's time for our final election free zone now you might remember this election free zone was inspired all those weeks ago by Brenda a woman in Bristol when she was told by the BBC's John Kay that there was to be an election she responded in a certain way in her distinct Bristolian accent and so tonight 58 days later in Brenda's honour We've taken her words and we've had them spoken in a variety of rich accents from across the United Kingdom. So here it is, our final election-free zone, a tribute to Brenda who inspired it. You're joking. Not another one. Oh, for God's sake, I can't, honestly, I can't stand this. There's too much politics going on at the moment. Why does she need to do it? Oh, you're joking. Not another one. Oh, for God's sake, I can't, honestly. I can't stand this. There's too much politics going on at the moment. Why does she need to do it? You're joking. Not another one. Oh, for God's sake. I can't, honestly, I can't stand this. There's too much politics going on at the moment. Why does she need to do it? You're joking, not another one. Oh, for God's sake, I can't honestly, I can't stand this. There's too much politics going on at the moment. Why does she need to do it? You're joking, not another one. Oh, for God's sake, I can't honestly, I can't stand this. There's too much politics going on at the moment. Why does she need to do it? Oh, you're joking, not another one. Oh, for God's sake, I can't honestly, I can't stand this. There's too much politics going on at the moment. Why does she need to do it? You're joking. Not another one. Oh, for God's sake, I can't... I honestly, I can't stand this. There's too much politics going on at the moment. Why does she need to do it? You're joking. Not another one? Oh, for God's sake. I can't honestly... I can't stand this. There's too much politics going on at the moment. Why does she need to do it?
BBC News at 6 o'clock. This is Chris Aldridge. Good evening. This little piggy went wee, 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 all the way home. What Linton, what, what Linton will tell you is that you can't, he can't fathom a pig on market day.